Hey guys, I'm here with my good buddy Scott Hebert from Flavorful Farms. I have done two videos with him before and I'll make sure to link to those in this video. And I'm just checking in on Scott. I was over at uh, Heidi Cook's farm today. I'm doing a little, little uh, coastal trip, checking out some past students and uh, protégés of what they're doing. And uh, I thought I'd pop in at Scott, on, on Scott. Yeah. How cool. you doing? Good, thanks for coming. Yeah, Scott's full, you're full time this year. Yep, yep, yep. first year full time. So this is the first year full time. You've yep. been doing this for three years. Yeah, this is my third season. Third season, now it's full time. So how has it been? Uh, awesome, yeah. The last two seasons I was uh, working an off-farm job still. Uh, first year I worked at a woodworking place and then last year I worked mostly at a golf course during the farming season. And it was so hard doing both. And now this year it's just like, it's like finally feels like I've been working for my freedom for like two, two or three years. Uh, and it's that's like, awesome. Yeah, it's here. And it's great too because your farm is specialized and so it's pretty manageable. My farm is extremely manageable. Um, I think I would like to, I need to grow my gross income on it, like to be about 1.5 to two times what it is right now. But um, it's definitely, it's so manageable right now. Um, all, I'm doing like four crops, uh, all my guys pay on time. Like it's, I know it's what- a dream come yeah, true. Yeah, I know what, <laughs> pretty much. I know like what my orders are pretty much gonna be for the week. Um, it's like, yeah, it's super manageable right now. That's kind of actually one of the cruxes of how I'm thinking about developing my farm because like I'm gonna add a farmer's market that's gonna add such another layer of complexity on top of what I'm already doing yeah yeah so I want to just check out some of the new stuff that you've done like you've added some infrastructure totally. um, I think there's some new tools you got a new office maybe let's do a little quick walk in the field and, and check out some stuff you've changed this yeah. year so um, before I was farming just on this plot right here and I had um, 48 25 foot beds and now this year I've switched to doing 50 foot beds and I've added more onto the side and I'm actually expanding out further into my backfield as well so now I have 35 50 foot beds in production right now uh, I'm doing primarily salanova lettuce spinach and then I have some beds of red Russian kale and a little bit of arugula that I, but I don't sell too much of that because it mostly gets flea beetled out you got a lot of yeah. flea beetle problems eh? so um those are kind of my four main field crops and then uh yeah this is it right here so i got everything set up on um switch to wobblers this year yeah yeah i was i had a whole different um sprinkler system irrigation system and it was uh it was crap i had a whole bunch of spots in the middle that were really getting um inadequate water yeah you're just you're screwing your production up oh totally yeah because like i need everything to come out super even so i can those are old beds um i need everything to come out super even so that I can predict uh, what my sales are gonna be mm -hmm. or add my production. And uh, yeah, now switch over these wobbler head sprinklers. These things are awesome. Wobblers, in my opinion, are the best sprinkler for overhead if you're not like urban like me where you have fences close by. Like the, they're fantastic. It's what Jean Martin Fortier uses. Um, Ray Tyler's using these. They're the best. They just basically spin 360 degrees. Yeah. So I've got them all um, on different lines. And then I have my source over at the house here with a cam lock on the end. And then if I want to, I'll just go and take the hose and plug it into whatever line I need to water on. So you have what, one, two, you got six zones. Yeah, six different okay. zones. So, and then, and then plus two, when I want to add, go out further into the backfield, then I can easily add on a whole nother line without having to add on like a whole nother area of complexity. Yeah, right. it's good. So it's, it, it works, it works well for this year. I've had way better. It's everything's been like way smoother this year. Yeah. This is the kind of the time when like, um, the first, two years everything felt like it was like such a struggle and now it's like getting to be way easier are you doing everything by yourself yeah everything's yeah, by it, myself it's kind of neat like you're a little less than a quarter acre eh? yeah like a fifth of an acre or yep. something small yeah but it's cool because it's like it's very manageable for one person especially with your crop selection yeah oh yeah i um i've been really thinking about that too as i kind of thinking about developing my farm because right now my farm is like super manageable for one person to do and um, if I add on like a different farmer's market or moving to a say, CSA or something, I would have to add in like another person working with me. Mm -hmm. And um, something that I've kind of learned about myself is that I'm not necessarily the best manager of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I can manage myself really well, but um, yeah, I'm not necessarily the best manager of other people. So like, I don't think it's really, I think it's in my ability to have a really bumping farm, but not necessarily like a four man crew farm. Right. I don't think that, I don't think that that would take somebody else that would have a different skill set than I have. Right, yeah. right. Well, that's cool. It's, it's cool that you've learned that in this whole process. Yeah. 
So this is the new block. How many are in this? 10, uh, 10 beds 11. in this? So I got 11 beds here. Yep. So uh, yeah, this has been awesome. I, uh, I had this big tarp and last year it was over top of this whole thing. So then at the beginning of the year, I broke all this up with my BCS, came in here. And this soil is like, this is actually probably some of my best soil on my farm. Wow. And it's been, it's been really good. I've had quite a bit more weed pressure than um, my older beds but it's been really well. The one thing I really wanted to um, do on my farm this year was I really wanted to be able to have a weed-free farm. Yeah. I really thought that that would kind of mean that I was doing the proper size of a farm because nothing was getting away from me. Exactly, right? that's yeah. a good way of putting it. Yeah, thinking about that. So yeah, I always, the one, um, the one thing I realized from doing last year was that uh, I think that the, you need to have a farm, when you're trying to figure out how big of a farm to make, you need to have a farm that you can still mow the lawn afterwards. <laughs> because mowing the lawn is not essential task at all, and it's something that you can easily let go, but if you have time to quickly go around and mow the lawn afterwards, that means you have the proper size farm because it's like something that you can do at the end of the day, right? I like that. Yeah, yeah, but it's something that it's, it's like not really getting too far away from you. So I, that's what I noticed like last year, every time I mowed the lawn, I was like, I just came out here and it was just like, oh, I was like, oh, I just had this feeling that like everything was nice and done, right? Yeah. Um, and anytime that it started, like I seen like all the dandelions popping up and stuff, it was it was starting to get scary. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah. So what have your hours been like this year? Um, pretty manageable. Uh, I've been trying to take off one day a week, uh, for sure, like completely off of my farm, and I've been able to do that. Um, I've at the beginning of the year I had more time because I was doing infrastructure projects. I built a new washing station, which I'll show, and had to re-roof a barn, which I'll show you in a little bit. But um, yeah, my hours have been like really manageable. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are my bigger uh, harvest wash pack days. Um, but other than that, uh, Wednesdays are usually slower and Sundays are usually pretty slow. Yeah. So I've just been kind of able to bounce everything around within that. So Sundays you can take off? Sundays I can take completely off and occasionally or a Wednesday I'll be able to take off. Oh wow. Which is, which is really nice too. The other thing about working for yourself which is cool is like if someone else wants to do something in the middle of the week, right i can go do that or whatever so it's yeah it's been kind of fun doing stuff like that wow nice yeah um is this a new block you're prepping up this is this is a new block that i'm prepping out so this has been on here um since i took this off i just flipped it over here and then this will be actually i'm going to plant this out um this fall still so I'll, I'll prep out i think i only have 40 feet this way but I'll think I can get in like eight beds this way. Mm -hmm. So this used to be my old compost pile with the sunflowers. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, so I'll rip those out, take the seeds off of them, but then everything is just gonna get uh, leveled out and um, I'll have eight beds going this way. Um, I had infrastructure projects to do at the beginning of the year in the springtime. And so I didn't, uh, I knew that fall was gonna be a bigger time for my production on my farm. And so I'm really, now that I have like all these different revenue streams kind of in place now, and I know people will take my stuff, I, I feel a lot better about planting out everything, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. now this will all become, I can I think I can sell a lot of spinach. So I have all my lettuce starts ready for winter or for late fall, winter. And then um, this will all be pretty much spinach and a little bit of red Russian kale, just cold hardy crops, right? So are you doing much winter production then? Um, I will go, I'll plant out all my, I'm not gonna do anything over winter, but I would like to go um, as far into like the end of November, December as I can. Okay, so you're gonna have a nice winter off then. Oh yeah, 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 that's, well that's like, yeah, that, that's kind of one of the beauties about like this style of farming is that you're basically gonna get three months off. Yeah. Um, so you work hard and then you get a nice little rest too, yeah. which is something that I really like. I don't have to, if I had an employee, I might have to worry about like trying to uh, employ them for longer into the season or of whatever. Course. But for me and for like my revenue streams and what I'm doing, everyone was like, it's so funny. Some people are just like super happy. Um, I like tell them, I'm like, yeah, I'll probably have stuff until December. And they're like, what, December? Like, no way. And they're like yeah. so happy. And I'm like, okay, well, cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sales slow down then anyways. Yeah, yeah, everything gets slow. Totally. So this is a new sort of tool shed yeah, I area. Call it, I call it my washing station. Okay, um, oh, and it's your post harvest, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this barn was here before and this actually used to be, I used to have chickens in here. So these posts were all here. And I had like, this was like a fenced off chicken coop kind of area. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to re-roof this barn. So I took the old nettle that was all rusty and gross and I put it onto my sides here and I used it on the top. So all I really had to do was get the, uh, the wood to frame everything in. Mm -hmm. And then it was pretty much gonna be my new washing station. So um, I have a little bit of tool storage and tote storage in okay, here. Okay, yeah. 
but um, I've kind of gone through a couple of different iterations of how I wanted it to happen because originally when I drew it out and designed it I thought it was going to come in from the field bubble spin dry pack but then after I was in here for a little bit and started to actually use it I realized that coming through this other way would be better and then I'm gonna end up cutting a door into here to go right into my walk-in cooler. Mm. So everything is set up to be like super efficient. You, if I had someone else in here that was helping me, not that I have anyone, but if they were, no one would be tripping over each other. It's like, it's super, it's just super efficient. I got like, I would come in here, I have all my totes ready in case I need one. Um, have my bubbler here. Yep. So. Super easy. Okay, you just mounted it right above there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then easy. I'll right now. I just have a, I just have the cords, but I'll I'll plug in a switch soon. Mm -hmm. um, now that I know that this is like more permanent of a setup. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so this is just here, ready to go. If I need to hand spin anything, I got my little hand spinner. But I got my greens dryer. Mm -hmm. Greens Cable, yeah. spinner. Yeah, or, or dryer. Yeah, spinner dryer. And then uh, and then I'll come over here and pack everything. So. I was kind of halfway between packing my orders. I was just waiting today for some more orders from the grocery store to come in. But what I do is I always, um, once I get my order, so I do, this is like a smoothie blend. So I'll do red Russian kale and spinach together. Um, but I'll pre-label my bags. You pre-label the bags. I pre-label the bags hmm. because then, because that is the, I found that that is the fastest way to do it because then I'll have, I'll have my tote of greens here. I'll have my bags pre-labeled so I don't end up filling any extra bags. Um, and then I'll have my cardboard box here that will have my finished order in it. Mm. So, um, yeah, I take the bags, pre-label them, take my greens, put it in there, weigh it out, seal um, it, and then it goes right into the finished bag, uh -huh. the finished box. Right. The finished box goes right in the cooler. Instead of having to handle it again, that's the I've way we've only, done it. Yeah, I've only had to pick up that bag one time. That's or, great. Or, sorry, after I got a label on there, I only have to pick it up one time yeah. and it's, it's totally done. So that took me a little bit a while to figure out because before I was before I was filling all the bags and then I would have them all filled up on the table like this and then I'd have to come through yeah and rip off the label and put it on there yeah. and then pick them all up again and put them in and I was like yeah I, I just it, yeah it was so crazy after so many like, bags it was driving you crazy yeah yeah you're doing like <laughs> now I'm doing like thousands of bags right yeah. so it's just like every little bit you start to realize how like inefficient stuff is oh for sure yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so uh, I've got another I've got another washing table out here that I'll use to so I got wash another, totes and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so I just yeah. come out here and spray off all my totes and stuff. Yep. So that works really well. Um, yeah, this whole thing has been like this has been a total game changer because like before I was um, inside the barn and I was in this shop and it was just like it was just not that great. Yeah, um, I was like tripping all over myself and. Yeah, it was just a, it was just kind of a mess. But yeah. now it's just like also now that I've done like thousands of bags, everything's like way easier. You just get start to get into like kind of a flow of everything. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. Oh, cool. So this is um this is where most of my like better tool storage is because I can come in here and lock it up. Yeah. But uh, there'll be a door that will be cut right into here, uh -huh. and then I'll be able to go right into my cooler because my cooler ends up being right here. Right. So that'll be super efficient instead of having to walk all the way around that wall. Of course. Yeah. But this works really well for all the stuff in here because like when I'm going to harvest something, I'll usually have a couple totes that I'll put on like standby here, a couple yep. clean totes. And then when I'm going to harvest in the morning, it's just there. Yeah. I'm just walking Boom. out there. So yep. I know that I know that on um, Mondays and uh, Mondays and Thursdays that I'm harvesting spinach and I'm harvesting lettuce. So um, yeah, just walk right out there. Boom. So everything's Easy. like super efficient. So close. So one thing, yeah, the one thing that I love about my farm is like I really set it up to be everything is set up to be super efficient. So like stuff comes in, stuff comes out. It's all right there. I'm not wasting any trips, not really wasting too much motion with everything. So yeah, yeah it's awesome. Even, and then I even got like my, my BCS is sitting here. Um, I've got all my seeds and stuff. I'll start to build out like a, like a more kind of, now that I know that I want stuff here, I'll yeah. put like a more permanent like um, seed storage mm -hmm. shelving here. Mm -hmm. But this is my stuff, so I got like scale, microgreen seeds stuff like that it's cool because you've let your your function define your form like yeah. i've seen you change this and now it seems like now that you're full-time you're really starting to see these things oh, yeah. now you're now you'll probably you'll, you're gonna set things up more permanent so it's, it's really it's a really smart way of uh, yeah. thinking about it it's um like when i'm making something i want everything to be perfect right away 
and I get really like paralysis by analysis where like I won't do something for a while uh, and that's a pretty big mistake because even if you put something in wrong then you're you put it in and you're like oh that was dumb like why have I been putting those labels on afterwards I should be putting them on before right you figure out stuff by like doing it wrong first so it's kind of like that's kind of what I've been like doing a bit more now is just like trying to trust myself to like just like do it wrong first and then fix it afterwards which is why I didn't like build out anything in there until I know that I want that setup in that thing to be like that because it's less undoing stuff yes because <laughs> yeah. undoing work sucks yeah, yeah totally so I just do most stuff like temporary so this was kind of like a little nursery area that I built originally so I'm still doing um I do like a weekly order of pea shoots to one guy mm -hmm. he's like my good restaurant he's just like super easy it's like three pounds every week tack it on with like eight pounds of uh, greens to the other place. So it's like super nice. easy, but I've got all these shelves in here. So this will be all my um, my like winter slash late fall lettuce. So mm -hmm. I literally planted out every single seed of Salanova that I had. Um, <laughs> yeah, why not? Just yeah. fill the beds. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I figure I can sell it. And if, even if I run out of beds, I can add on those beds in the back. So I have, right now I have um, a lot. I've got, I've got three different spots on my farm where I've got trays of stuff germinating. So. Um, so all these will get planted out by like September 15th and then that will pretty much be it for the year. It's kind of nice because like, uh, you have to plant harvest and market and now it's getting to be the point in time of the year when like, I don't have to plant anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's like, kind of feels like the year's like tapering off a little bit, but yeah. it's like that one last big push to get everything in there. But then, but then the farm becomes like even more manageable because it's like, yeah, it's super easy. Well, yeah. Cause you don't have to worry about continuing to rotate beds. You're just kind of yeah. running on what you've got. Totally. So it's like last year I was. Last year I was slow. I was slow on everything at the end of the year. I didn't um, get my transplants in in time and uh, I was slow to get them under the poly low tunnels. And then I had troubles with the poly low tunnels right away. Like the very first day that I put my poly low tunnels up, they, it was like the next morning was like the windiest day. <laughs> and uh, oh, I was, it was like, I would, I put, I put four rocks, like four big rocks on each side of the poly low tunnels. And I was like, okay, that's good. And then I went out the next morning and it was like, I would, I would, I went out there the next morning and all three had been ripped off except for like one rock was like holding the plastic down. Right. <laughs> and so I would fix one and then I would go to fix the next one. And by the time that I had all three fixed, the first one would be ripped again and I'd have to like go fix it. So I spent like, I spent like all day just like, moving uh, so you're switching to caterpillar tunnels. Yeah. Then. So I'm switching to caterpillar yeah. tunnels. Hopefully I'll get, <laughs> yeah, hopefully I'll get two, but I think on the small 50 foot bed that I'll do. I'll still do some poly low tunnels on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that nice. makes yeah makes a bit more sense. So Scott is also a YouTuber, and uh, I'll I'll make sure I leave the link to his channel below and link it at the video. But he's got a little studio in here too. Yeah. So this is like my studio slash office that I've been kind of refurbing. This was actually I where, love this wall. Yeah, I, I want to do the same thing. Yeah, I got it. I just went and got old pallets. It's mm -hmm. so yeah. I went and went on a big pallet run and got everything. It, it was a uh, it was really easy to do and it's super cost effective. Like it was free, right? Yeah. Just driving around. But this used to actually be where my old washing station was. So oh, I had, okay. I had, oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I had this wall didn't be here. I, I put it yes. in this wall now. But um, yeah, I had my wash, like my uh, bubbler here and washing table. And then I had my, uh, I didn't have a dryer yet. I just had the, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't have a spinner yet. I just had the dryer here and then I was packing onto this table. Uh -huh. But it was like, and there's so much room in here and it was just so big but now i've got uh everything out there like it's just like nice. this this is like yeah this is uh i'm pretty happy with this room so far it's been coming along pretty nice all right guys well that is scott i'm gonna leave a link below to his channel check him out follow him on his journey subscribe to the channel if you haven't hit the notification button next to it and like and share them with your friends all right guys talk to you later